Good morning, church. Good morning, everyone. This is Rickard from Sweden talking to you today. I'm so blessed and so privileged to be together with you in the spirit right now. Wherever you are watching us from right now, we just want to welcome you to this wonderful live broadcast. We believe that Jesus Christ is going to touch you today. He will meet you at the point of your need. Whatever you are going through right now in your life, whatever situation you may be facing, some may be facing the immediate threat of joblessness, losing your job or sickness in the family or even you yourself due to corona or other circumstances. We want to encourage you today. Thank you for tuning in. God Almighty will meet you at the point of your need today. He's going to touch your case. He will transform your life today in Jesus' name. I just want to take an opportunity And uh, ask each and every one of you that are watching right now to just share in the comments below where you are watching us from. For the glory of God, the devil has tried to use sickness, pandemics and various circumstances to stop the people of God from meeting. But for the glory of God Almighty, we are now in every single home around the world. Jesus Christ is being declared more than ever before and we are just so excited about it. Please share in the comments below where you're watching us from, from Canada, from Mexico, from Europe, from Asia and from Africa and from America, of course. Here in Europe right now, it's afternoon, of course, in US for you, it's just morning. In Asia, people are probably going to bed soon and And wherever you are watching us from, we believe that distance is not a barrier for God Almighty to touch your case today. I want to take you quickly to the book of Matthew chapter 8. There's a wonderful scripture I just want to read for you. I hope it will encourage you before we jump into the message today. Matthew chapter 8. It's uh, when Jesus heals the centurion's servant. The Bible says uh, that the centurion in verse 8 and Jesus said in verse 7, I will come and heal your servant. But in, in verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. The centurion here demonstrated an absolute faith in the omnipresence of of the Holy Spirit. He believed that wherever his servant was, Jesus Christ could heal him right where he was. And Jesus in turn answered and said that he had not seen such faith anywhere in Israel. I believe that today your faith in the omnipresence of God Almighty is going to heal you. Jesus Christ is going to see you and he will reward you for your faith In Jesus' mighty name. We believe that distance is not a barrier. So just be in faith and be expecting Jesus Christ. Really touch your case today. Something is going to happen. You will not remain the same in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, let us position ourselves for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for technology. Through technology, we are able to be gathered in your name today and your bible says that when two or three gather in your name you are in their midst lord we pray that you will do something special today lord heal those that need healing today lord we pray that you will break bondages for those who are sitting in oppression that are watching the screen right now thank you lord for your healing touch that is going to meet them today Headaches are going to go away. Neck pains are going to go away. Wherever you are sitting and watching us today, I believe that Jesus Christ has made you to tune into this live stream for a purpose. He's going to meet you today in Jesus' name. Wherever you are sitting right now in your living room, your tears, Jesus Christ sees your tear. If you're lying in bed with your silent prayers, Jesus Christ hears them and he is ready right now. He's only a moment away. He's telling you today, just Keep praying. Just hold your faith. I'm only a moment away to meet you at the point of your need. I want to encourage you today. Keep your faith high in Jesus' mighty name. Today, I want to talk about something that I believe that we are all able to relate to, to some degree, due to the circumstances that we are facing right now. Many of us are in quarantine. We are not able to go out and we are not able to to do our normal day-to-day life. 
And we are continuing the sermon series today on, on while in quarantine. And some of us that are watching, we may be able to, to identify in different areas. I mean, Corona and, and the situation that we are facing is the most immediate one. But many of us have other circumstances that they can also identify. I want to encourage you today in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I pray that you will use my voice to speak to people today, Lord. I pray that just for that one or those two people that really need to hear this message, may it just touch them today, Lord. Maybe it's more, Lord, even. I pray that you will touch us today, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. The title of, of my message today, and I have to admit, it's, it's a little bit strange to be talking to the to the screen like this and not having any response from people, you know, people used to clap hands when they're excited. So I, I kind of just have to imagine when you are excited and I hope that we are in one accord through the Holy Spirit today. And the title of my message today is something interesting. And I'm just gonna throw it out there and then I'm gonna share a quick story with you. The title of my message today is called Striking the colors striking the colors some of us may have heard this term before most of us probably haven't heard it and i'm gonna go through just in a few minutes what striking the colors mean but before then i want to share just a little bit of my personal experience i don't know if you know much about my story i'm Ri my name is Richard. i'm married to Brittany in the church here and, and um, about seven months ago, something happened in our life that drastically changed what, how we perceived our day-to-day -day life. I traveled to Canada to meet with an old friend and when I came back to USA, I was denied entry back into the United States. And they said that I have to go back to my country, Sweden, and wait for my green card to be ready. So here I am seven months later and it's been a really tough time for me and Brittany. We have only met, we met twice. She's traveled here twice in the past seven months. So we met for a couple of weeks and, and as a newlywed, it's not an easy situation. I do not wish this upon anyone, but through it all, God Almighty has really been teaching us. He's been strengthening us and we believe that what the devil meant for evil, God Almighty will turn around for good. And it was really in the midst of this where I was, I was kind of asking God pretty severely some months back. And I was asking God, why, why, why did you let this happen to us of all people? Can't you see that we have already paid some degree of a price? Why is this happening to us? And, and God began to tell me that only purpose that the devil makes us go through things whatever it may be it may be temptation sickness rejection isolation whatever attacks afflictions or adversity that you may go through the purpose of it is for you to surrender your faith there is nothing more valuable, there is nothing more precious than your faith in Jesus Christ. And as the devil plans for us to strike the colors, Jesus Christ has a different purpose for us. So I realized some months back that, wow, I feel like this is really a big temptation or a big situation that... The devil wanted me to strike the colors. But glory be to God Almighty. God Almighty has a plan for, he had a plan for my situation. He has a plan for your situation. And he's going to turn your situation around. There is a purpose for everything that we face. It doesn't just happen because we're unlucky. It doesn't just happen because the devil is uh, the ruler of this world. No. It happens because we are children of God. The devil wants us to surrender our faith, but God Almighty has a better plan for it. Striking the colors. Striking the colors, and I'm reading from my notes here, from the online dictionary, it says that striking the colors is a military term, which means to lower your flag in surrender. 
striking the colors, meaning lowering the flag that, signific that signifies a ship's or garrison's allegiance, is a universally recognized indication of surrender, particularly for ships at sea. So back in the days when uh, naval warfare was more common, where you would have ships representing this country and ships representing this country, they would go to seas and they would have their cannons and they would shoot at each other. The moment that a ship lowers its, its flag, it means that it has now officially surrendered to the enemy. That means that the enemy now has legal right and ownership over that ship. That is the meaning of striking the colors. Hallelujah. Um, striking the colors means that you lower your flag. Lower your flag in surrender to the enemy. And I just want to tell you that as us, as Christians, when... when um, I say striking the colors, lowering the flag. Our flag in this particular parable is our faith in Jesus Christ. Our flag is our faith in Jesus Christ. It is by our faith that we are known by people. People see your faith. People hear your faith and they know, okay, this person has sworn allegiance to Jesus Christ. And that is why it is our faith that the devil wants to take, wants to destroy, wants to bring us down in our lives. The devil may be attacking us one way today and a, another way tomorrow. But I want to let you know, as long as you're receiving attack, it's a sign that your faith is still making noise. Let me tell you, the moment that your, the enemy stops attacking you, that means that there's nothing he is afraid of in you. So if you feel like you're being very attacked by the enemy, if you feel like there's a lot of negative circumstances and situations that is happening to you, if you feel like you're being tempted beyond measure, let me tell you that attack is a sign that you have not surrendered. The moment that a ship surrenders, the attacks would stop because now the enemy has legal right over that ship. So attacks is actually a sign that you are still disturbing the enemy. The moment that you are not experiencing attack, you are not experiencing adversity. You are not experiencing enticement, temptation, and, and issues that, that seem to conflict with your faith. That's when you should be worried. If someone is living oh, a beautiful, peaceful life, there's no attacks, everything is just good. You need to look at where your faith is. Is it high up, shining above anything else in your life? Or is your faith being lowered gradually in your life? Attacks is the very sign that you have not surrendered. So please be encouraged if you are facing difficult situations, difficult circumstances. God Almighty sees you and the devil sees you and he's trying to rob you of your faith. Remember what I said, it is only when you lower your flag that the enemy can enter your ship. The devil can never board your ship until you lower your flag. As long as you're keeping your flag up, as long as you are declaring your faith in the name of Jesus, as long as you are standing through the pain, the difficulties, the sickness, God Almighty has control over your situation. And as long as you're doing that, the devil can never board your ship. I want to go through briefly here today. There are three different situations and I want to go through this. And the reason why I want to share this is I want to really expose 
some of the things that the devil is using to attack us as children of God. So that when we see it, we can know that, oh, this is nothing else than the plots and the vices of the enemy. And I do not need to worry. I do not need to feel afraid. I don't need to be discouraged by the enemy because I know that I am victorious as long as I keep my faith up in the name of Jesus. So I want you to take some notes here if you are interested in this. There is three different areas in which the enemy tries to get us to strike the colors, to lower our flag, to surrender our faith. And number one is, and I'm going to read it right here. He tries through adversity. Number one, he tries through adversity. This can be sickness, long-term sickness, short-term sickness. It can be that someone has passed away in your family. It can be that you have lost your job. It can be divorce. It can be rebellious children. It can be other financial situations, difficulties, hardship, adversity. The devil tries through adversity. And the purpose of this is that he wants us to surrender our flag in submission to an overwhelming enemy. He wants us to surrender our flag in submission to an overwhelming enemy. That is the first way that the devil tries to attack us. The second area that the devil tries, he tries through enticement. This can be moral compromise. It can be falling into sin. It, it involves your weaknesses, your temptations, things that conflict with your faith, things that cause you to feel guilty, things that makes you to look at the world instead of God Almighty. One example is uh, in the book of Genesis 25, where Jacob offered a bowl of soup in trade for Esau's birthright. This is a perfect example where Iso chose to willingly hand over his flag in trade for temporary pleasure. This is an area that many of us as Christians are struggling with. Temptations to moral compromise and circumstances that cause us to simply trade it for temporary pleasure. The third area in which the devil tries to attack us, to strike us, to get us to lower our flag is enmity. Number one, adversity. Number two, enticement. Number three, enmity. Enmity is basically when you are experiencing bitterness or anger towards God, where you feel like God has not done what he promised he would do to you. Maybe you feel like it's taking too long for him to answer. Maybe, in fact, you're struggling to believe if he even exists. I feel like this is an area that the devil is striking many. When you go through the different areas, maybe you have faced a lot of adversity. Maybe the adversity causes you to go into enticement. And maybe as a result of enticement, you gain enmity towards the enemy. The enemy has struck in every area to try to steal your faith from you. So if you're feeling bitterness towards God, anger for how he could let certain things happen to you, to your family, to your friends, maybe you have a family member that have passed away. Maybe there are tragic accidents that happen in your family. Maybe there is someone who is chronically sick in your, in your family. Or maybe you are the one experiencing that. And you feel that bitterness and anger towards God. God, if you exist, 
How could you allow this to happen to me? God, how could you allow such situations to happen to me? God, you better prove yourself or I'm turning away from you. You have never done anything for me, God. You have never done, you have never blessed me. You have never treated me in any special way. God, I'm beginning to doubt if you even exist. Let me tell you that this is one of the areas, the strongest areas where the devil tries to attack us to steal our faith. And what he tries to do through enmity, he tries to make us throw away our flag, believing that it can do nothing for us. These are the three main areas. And I believe as you are watching today, you know the area in which you may be struggling. Maybe it's adversity today where the devil is trying to get you to surrender in submission to an overwhelming enemy. Maybe it's enticement where you feel like the devil is trying to get you to trade, to willingly trade your flag for temporary pleasure. Maybe you feel like you already have in some areas of your life. Or maybe it's enmity today, where the enemy is trying to get you to throw away your faith. Throw it away, believing that your faith can do nothing for you. I want to tell you, the fact that you are facing attacks is a sign that there is still hope for you. If you face no attacks, then it's dangerous. But if you are facing hardships today, if you are facing adversity today, if you are facing enticement today, I want to encourage you with the book of 2 Corinthians. And we are getting towards the end of the message now. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. This is Apostle Paul. From verse 22, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 22. Apostle Paul, he says that he's speaking like a foolish man here. He says, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequently. In debts often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Let me tell you, stoning, they don't throw pebbles at you. Stoning is an execution method. Surviving an execution is a miracle. Many people don't realize how miraculous a life the Apostle Paul was living. Many people don't realize how miraculous a life you are living. That you survived that situation that you wouldn't have survived. That you got out alive. That you are still alive and breathing even though the doctor says you shouldn't. When you are still sticking together with your significant other. Even though it feels like the love is gone. When you are going through hardship, doubts, feeling distant from God Almighty, and you think that that's just life. God Almighty is working miracles in your life. And I want to encourage you finally. In the medieval times, in the medieval times, I'm looking where I can drop my Bible for a minute. In the medieval times, when people went out for war, there was always a flag bearer the flag bearer other people would ride on horses with their swords and their lances and all kind of stuff there would be one flag bearer this flag bearer would have no weapon he would not be able to protect himself if someone attacked him on the battlefield but his sole responsibility was to keep the flag of their allegiance up high so that everyone who were fighting could see the flag up in the sky. 
And they knew as long as the flag was up in the sky, it was something still worth fighting for. It was still worth battling for because that flag gave them hope. I want to tell you today, your flag is giving people hope. Your flag is the sign that Jesus Christ lives and he never said goodbye. The devil will try to bring that flag down. Don't ever surrender to that enemy. Attacks are coming. You may even be facing it right now. It is the sign that your flag is still up high. I want to tell you right now and encourage you. Keep your flag up in the name of Jesus. Keep your flag up through the hardship. Keep your flag up through the difficulties, through that pain where it seems like you're alone in the battlefield. Let me tell you, as you're holding your flag up, you are encouraging the hosts of heaven. They are coming your way to set you free, to heal you, to deliver you, and to break that bondage. I want to end with, in, in the Bible, there's a place in Exodus 17. And after this, I promise you I'm going to be done. In Exodus 17, verse 11. I really hope you're getting something from this message, brothers and sisters. I'm, as I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. Because all what I'm talking about, I have experienced it the last few months. I really felt so discouraged. I felt like I was in the battlefield alone. And all I had was a flag, no way to defend myself. But Jesus Christ has promised, as you and I keep our flag up, even in the midst of adversity, in the midst of temptation, or even maybe enmity, the sense of feeling distant or, or being an enemy of Jesus Christ, He's coming for you because He never leaves a soldier in the battlefield. You may feel wounded today. You may feel like you're alone. He's coming for you. And I want to encourage you. Don't give up your faith. Your faith is the only thing that connects you with Jesus Christ. He doesn't care where you're coming from, your name, where you're born, or your circumstances. He only cares about your flag. Because that is what shows that, shows that you belong to Him. In the book of Exodus 17, verse 11. The, the Israelites were fighting against the Amalekites. And Joshua went out to fight against the Amalekites. But Moses got an instruction from God Almighty. And I'm reading from verse 11. And so it was, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. And so it was, but, oh, sorry, verse 12. But Moses' hands became heavy. He was dropping his hands. He was holding them up. And as long as he held them up, the armies of Israel were winning the battle. But his arms got heavy. He started dropping down his arms. And it says, so they took a stone and put him under it, and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hand, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. I want to tell you today, you are Aaron. To the people around you. Never you believe that you are called only to hold up your own flag. As Christians, we are called to go out there. See your friends and family. Those that nobody else notices. Notice their faith. Encourage their faith. Help them to hold their hands up. Because as Moses was holding his hands up physically, he was holding his flag up in the spirit. I want to encourage you today. Make sure... That you are a flag bearer for Jesus. Make sure that you are lifting up the arms of people around you. God bless you today. God Almighty will meet you today. In Jesus mighty name. Lord I just pray for every single person. Under the influence of this video right now. I pray that you will bless them right now where they are. Those that are feeling sickness. 
pain in their body. Maybe they have difficulties in breathing, difficulties in getting up from the chair, lying down in the bed. I pray for your healing power right now in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are feeling like you're lonely, Jesus Christ is with you right there, right now. And he's ready. Just open your mouth and pray right now and ask him to come and help you. He's only a moment away. All he needs to see is that flag. Oh, yes, this one belongs to me. Oh, God, I pray right now that you will break bondages right now. People that are struggling from joblessness, I pray that you will give new opportunities in jobs. God bless them right now. Bless them with new ideas right now. I pray for your deliverance power right now. Those that feel like they are under the yoke of affliction. Those that feel that they are under the bondage of evil spirits. I break it right now in the name of Jesus. I break it right now in the name of Jesus. You demon, I command you. Be broken in their lives in the name of Jesus. Come out of the body in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you and see you soon in the presence of God. Thank you.